You will never believe what the number one most affordable city is on this list. Jeremy Knight, the Knight Group, your favorite Austin realtor. I found this article by Good Hire and it talks about the most and least affordable cities around the US. So today we're gonna break down and look at the Texas cities because, well, I live in Texas. We're gonna go through and talk about the Texas cities that are the least and most affordable on this list. And again, you will not believe what number one is, but drop a comment. I wanna hear from you before you even watch this video, I want to hear from you. What do you think is the most and least affordable city in Texas? Okay, so let's look at the data and break the cities down. First off, let's talk about how Good Hire came up with this list. They came up with this data using the U.S. Census Bureau, Bureau of Labor Statistics, and the Bureau of Economic Analysis, and the U.S. Department of Commerce. Okay, so here's their metrics, and this is really crazy because, again, like I'm looking at this list going, I actually can't believe it, but here's their list. They used wage growth, unemployment rate, job growth, percentage of jobs open, renter affordability, homeowner affordability, and real per capita personal income. So if you're looking just right off the bat, just what is the best job markets, they didn't actually put any on here from the Texas regions, which I would imagine in my mind that Dallas and Austin probably have really good uh, jobs and people moving here. But here's what they said. They had Reno, Spartanburg, South Carolina, Savannah, Georgia, Provo, Utah, Boise, Naples, Ogden, Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah, Phoenix, Arizona, and Palm Beach. So None of those are in Texas. So if you're looking at regions and you're just going off of jobs and you want to believe everything on good hire, which look, they said they went through and did the data, those are the cities. All right, now we know how they came up with this information. Let's actually tackle this list. We're going to start from the least affordable and work our way up to that number one. And again, you're not going to believe number one. All right, did you write a comment? Did you say what number one was? Again, I want to hear from you. Okay, so... Here we go. Number 153 out of 155 was Corpus Christi Metro. Now, I couldn't really believe this because the median price for Corpus Christi is around 260000 And I was like poking around on my website and I found this like $1.4 million house, just beautiful on the beach and, and coastal views. Like I thought that was crazy for $1.4 million. But median price for a home, two sixty dollars around in the Corpus Christi. I imagine it's probably a little bit higher than that, but that's what they said. Yeah, so Corpus Christi, and you have just below this though, you have Hartford, Connecticut, and Los Angeles are the, are the two lowest. So that shocked me completely. But let's move up the list a little bit. And number 149, a city that's near and dear to my heart because my family lives there, is El Paso, Texas. So yeah, they, they're they they're way down the list. And what's just really interesting is that, you know, El Paso, the homes are pretty affordable right now. If you want to buy a home, it'd be in the 225 price point. Now there's there's definitely some growth that's happening in El Paso, but according to Good Hire, they are pretty far down this list. Let's work our way a little bit further up this list. And the next on this list, it's a Texas city, is Brownsville, Harlingen area. Now I have a uh, beach property in South Padre, which is just right outside Brownsville. Brownsville, and you have a lot of money being injected into Brownsville because of Elon, Boca Chica, and they're doing all the rocket stuff there, you know, SpaceX. I like this area. If you've ever actually been to Brownsville, it does not live up to the name Brownsville. It's very green, but I love this area. And if you want to buy a house in Brownsville, you're looking at that same 225 price point as El Paso, but right on the border of Mexico and the US. So yeah, there it is. So already in the top or bottom of the list, you have Corpus Christi, El Paso. Oh, I even skipped McAllen. I skipped McAllen. Oh my gosh. Actually, 145 was McAllen, and McAllen is also one of those border cities as well. So I, I totally skipped it, but here you go, McAllen. Same thing with McAllen. You're looking in that like 225, 250. So all these like border cities are kind of in the lower 200s. Um, I think though, if you really try, it's going to be a little bit more expensive than that. But yeah, so there you go. Brownsville 141, McAllen 146, El Paso 149, and then you have Corpus Christi 153. What's interesting to me is that I, I would have think these places would be a little more affordable just because the price of homes is so much cheaper versus some of those areas. Now we're moving our way up this list. And as we're moving up this list, we're looking at Beaumont number 136. It's crazy that Vallejo, California is actually below this. I would imagine Vallejo, California being above 
Beaumont, because Beaumont, the median price for Beaumont, still in that low 200s, like 225. You want to buy a house there, but Beaumont is kind of on that way out to Louisiana. I've never really spent a lot of time in Beaumont, so I can't tell you if it's good or not, but. There you go. Oh, and a uh, quick note, if you want, if any of these cities pop out to you as an area that you actually want to move to, I might not work in all these areas, but I have team members all over the place. So if you want a good realtor in those areas, to either buy or rent, reach out and we'll connect you with somebody awesome. All right. So here we go. But yeah, Vallejo, California, San Bernardino is right above Beaumont, which I would imagine the prices in some of those areas are in the seven or eight hundreds for homes, but I digress. Houston is number 126 on this list. Now, if you're looking at this area, they put Woodlands, Sugarland as part of it, but you're looking at a median around 425 really for those areas in Houston. Now, uh, I got a good friend, Katie Day. She's been on the channel quite a few times and we talk about Houston a lot. So I would have thought Houston would have been on the more affordable side, but Think about the cities that aren't low on this list yet. It's pretty impressive. Let's go look at number 120 though. 120 is an is on this list and I couldn't imagine this being this low on the list, but that's San Antonio. So they put on here San Antonio, New Braunfels. Now New Braunfels, if you're paying attention, I have been investing personally in New Braunfels. I think it's one of the best places that I-35 corridor to invest if you're investing in the Austin or Central Texas area. And then San Antonio, the median price for San Antonio is about 280K, which I imagine is probably gonna be closer to 300 or just over if you're buying in reality. And New Braunfels, the median price is 390, which is crazy because I got a great deal on a property way well below that. So that area, it's, it's lower on the affordability list of this list, but let's work our way up because there's some pretty interesting stuff happening next. Next on the list, we jump up all the way up to number 88, and that is Colleen Temple. Now, looking at Colleen and Temple, the median prices in this area for Colleen's about 220 and Temple's about 285. I'd imagine the numbers that I'm pulling are probably a little off because if we're talking median, if you're gonna buy prices, they're gonna be a little bit higher, most likely. But these areas are just outside of Austin, right? Colleen and Temple, they're probably about an hour, maybe a little less th than an hour. So if you're looking along that I-35 corridor, you got New Braunfels, San Antonio to the south, Colleen to the north, and then Waco, but Waco's not on this list at all, which is impressive. Maybe I missed it, but I didn't see Waco at all. So yeah, there you go, Colleen. If, if you're gonna be there, I know a lot of people have asked me about Colleen recently, but I'll put you in good touch with a good agent if you need it there. Anyway, let's move a little bit further up this list. Number 84. Number 84 is Lubbock. Now, I've been to Lubbock one time. I don't plan to go back. Nothing wrong with Lubbock. Uh, they do say it's very flat though, and the running joke that I've always heard is if you stand on a number 10 can, you can see all the way to Australia. And if you stand on the hood of your car, you can see the back of your own head. That's how flat Lubbock is. But I've uh, been there one time, went to an Arizona State UT, uh, sorry, Texas Tech game, and uh, it was fun, it was a good time. But there you go, if you're gonna buy over there, you're looking about three, th uh, sorry, 235 as a medium price in the Lubbock area. All right, let's keep moving up this list because you notice there's a couple cities not on here yet that I haven't talked about. And the next one on this list is Dallas. The median price in the Dallas area is 400K. I know a lot of people are moving to Dallas because let's be honest, Dallas has a little more inventory than Austin. It's a little less expensive. They're either going to Dallas, they're going heavily to Houston as well. Again, I said the median price in Houston's kind of around 400 as well. So Dallas and Houston cheaper, San Antonio a little cheaper, but from an affordability standpoint, Dallas is number 54 on this list. Who else is around 54? Colorado Springs Metro is 53. Columbia, South Carolina is 55. Jacksonville, Florida, 49. Savannah, Georgia, we talked about Savannah, Georgia, is 47, which is interesting because remember, one city that I didn't talk about yet, Austin, Texas, wasn't even on their top 10 best. And look, Savannah, Georgia is lower on this list, so maybe this list is garbage, I don't know. But that brings us all the way up to number 22 most affordable 
Austin, Texas, Georgetown. So if you look at the median for Austin area for the MSA, which is like Georgetown all the way down to like Kyle, Buda, San Marcos, you're looking about 500,000 right now for the median. And if you look at the Austin area, I would imagine when the March numbers come out in a couple weeks, we are gonna be over 600,000. That's my prediction. It's a little nugget in this video for you. What do you think though? Do you think that Austin should be this high on this list? I mean, I've heard a lot of people say that Austin's unaffordable, but apparently according to this list, which states, let me read the headline again, 2022's most affordable places to live and work in the US. Okay, granted, Austin and no Texas City is in the top 10, so number one would be like Sioux Falls, South Dakota. How many people wanna to move to South, South, I can't even say Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Who wants to go to Reno? I don't know if very many people want to move to Reno. I'm sure there's Renonians out there, but Austin, Texas, the best, most affordable place to live, believe it or not, and that probably has a lot to do with a lot of the incomes from these tech companies moving here. What do you think? Drop a comment below. I did not make this list up, even though I said this list, and it does make me look good in Austin. Good hire, put out this list. We'll catch you in the next video.